Welcome back to another horror movie review and tier list. In this one, we will be continuing the Leprechaun franchise by doing Leprechaun 2. I'll be giving a summary of the movie while also reviewing it along the way, giving some positives and negatives and my thoughts on the movie in general. And of course, whenever there is a kill in this movie, I will stop and go ahead and rank it on the tier list. Now, of course, there are obvious spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen this movie and don't want anything ruined for you, you had your chance. Keep in mind that these are just my opinions only, so if you don't share them, that's totally fine, but let me know in the comments what you think and please give your opinions as well. The overall plot of this second film is basically the same as the first one, and that the Leprechaun has one of his gold coins stolen, and on a quest to go out and find it, he kills anyone that gets in his way. Except there is one added element to this one, and that the Leprechaun is out to find his perfect bride. Leprechaun 2 is a 1994 horror and comedy slasher film that's directed by Rodman Flender. It also has Mark Jones on as a producer who wrote and directed the first film. Warwick Davis does return in this movie to play his iconic role as the Leprechaun. Some of the other main characters who are in this movie are Bridget, who is played by Siobhan Durkin, Cody, who is played by Charlie Heath, and his uncle Morty, who is played by Sandy Barron. Leprechaun 2 starts in Ireland 1,000 years ago, where you see William O'Day running through the woods trying to escape from the Leprechaun. He was made into the Leprechaun's slave one day after he tried to steal his gold. It's both St. Patrick's Day and the Leprechaun's 1,000th birthday, which means it's time for him to find his bride. He tells William that once he finds his bride, he will let him go and grant him his freedom. The moment the last is buried to be, then you, my slave, shall be set free. All the Leprechaun has to do is make the Maiden sneeze three times, and she is his. However, if someone says, God bless you, that calls it off. She sneezes twice. She'll be me bride when she sneezes thrice. Naturally, William is ecstatic about this because he's finally going to be free from the Leprechaun. However, once the Leprechaun shows him his bride of choice, William realizes that it's his daughter. Leprechaun uses his magic tricks to make her sneeze three times. However, William says, God bless you, to save his daughter and takes off running. God bless you, my child. And this brings us to our very first kill. Naturally, this enrages the Leprechaun, so he chases after him and manages to catch him with his magic. He tells William that he is cursing his seed and plans to marry a descendant of his on his 2000th birthday. That's when the Leprechaun finally kills William using some sort of, again, force choke to snap his neck and drop him to the ground. Now, as far as where does the very first kill rank for the second movie, um... It's not one of the bottom two tiers. I could maybe put it in good, but I'm gonna just put it in C in average. Um, there's no uh, anything special that stands out. It's Leprechaun using his magic to, you know, kind of control things, which he's seen at this point. Uh, there's no gore. There's, you know, really nothing out of this world. Um, but it's important to the story because without, you know, this and without him running away and, you know, trying to save his daughter, there would literally be no plot, kind of like Ozzy's stupidity in the first one. Um, and this is kind of like Mrs. O'Grady's death in the first movie, too, where there was really nothing special, but it was kind of important to the plot and it got the job done and it gave you, an, you know, an introduction to the Leprechaun. Um, but I didn't really like this introduction to Leprechaun as much as I did in the first movie. It's definitely not good, but I don't think it's really poorly executed. This is just your standard, do what you gotta do, get the point across, and then kind of move on with the plot, so it's going in average. During the intro credits, we see the Leprechaun tracing William's descendants all the way down to his current one. That brings us to the modern time 1,000 years later, where we meet Bridget. She is the latest descendant of William O'Day and the person that Leprechaun has chosen to be his bride. And we also meet her boyfriend Cody, who is currently trying to scam some people into a haunted tour for his uncle. After Cody rounds up the passengers, he and Bridget go to find his uncle Morty, where they realize that he's at the bar getting drunk. Cody tries to sober his uncle up by dunking his head in a bucket of ice water, and then Morty figures that he might as well do it a second time. Wait. Uh, 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 uh. This attempt to sober Morty up did not work at all, leaving Cody no choice but to go ahead and take the people on the haunted ride himself. This makes Bridget visibly irritated as this has now set their date back and she's forced to go on this stupid ride with them. At one point, Bridget even sabotages this tour a little bit by purposely giving Cody the wrong cue card. When the car is stopped, a drunken homeless man appears outside of the car and then we follow that same man into the woods where he goes to drink and sleep. However, the place that he decided to take his nap happens to be right next to the tree that the leprechaun calls his home. 
Leprechaun, being an alcoholic himself, steals the man's alcohol and then emerges from the tree, where he spits out the alcohol since it's Canadian and not Irish. Bah! Blended Canadian! The only whiskey is Irish whiskey! Bah. It's at this point that Leprechaun realizes the man has a golden tooth, so he uses his magical powers to tie him down with tree roots and rip that golden tooth right out. We cut back to Bridget and Cody, who are now arriving at the go-kart track where their date is supposed to happen, but as they head inside, Bridget decides to leave Cody and go ride with one of their friends, Ian, since he's willing to take off work and go spend time with her. Cody tries to assure her that everything will be totally different next time, but she insinuates that there will not be a next time. This makes Cody so mad that he ends up running a red light and getting arrested, forcing his Uncle Morty to bail him out, where he displays some phenomenal acting. What did you think? Did you think these guys wouldn't catch you? These are LA's finest. Yeah, I guess I just wasn't thinking. Damn straight. Thank you, officer. Uh, why don't you take one of these for yourself? You missed your calling. You should have been an actor. At this point, the homeless man who had his tooth ripped out by the leprechaun enters the police station and reports what happens, but of course they don't believe him. However, Cody does overhear him say what the leprechaun's home was. We cut to the leprechaun where he is spinning what I presume is a shillelagh to try to find his bride, where he's approached by a man who gives him a job offer in what I guess is a freak show. When the man goes to give the leprechaun his car, the leprechaun rips his finger off so he can get the gold ring on his finger. Now I'm going to take a break here to get my first complaint and negative out of the way. What the hell was that prosthetic? I'm going to put the screenshot up here and you can see for yourself, what is that? You could have easily used that same prosthetic for the ripping of the finger, but why did you have to put that in that shot where he's showing the card? He doesn't need a fake finger for that, he's just showing a card. It's so obvious and I hate that. But after that happens, we're going to move on to our second kill here in a little bit. Ian drives Bridget back home and tries to make a move, but quickly gets rejected, saying that she's still with Cody, and punches him in the gut. However, a few seconds later, we see Bridget luring him into the garage with her sexuality, only to find out that it's actually the leprechaun using some more of his tricks. When Ian goes in to kiss her stomach and moves his way up to her breast, he is shredded by two propellers and has his face absolutely destroyed. <laughs> Now, ranking this kill is actually going to be tricky. Um, it's definitely not in the bottom two, and it's above average, so it leaves the top three here. It's not all-time great, because it's just not. Um, and I don't know where to put it in A or B. Uh, it definitely stands out for the franchise, which is why I want to put it here. But the lack of gore, which I'm assuming might have been for the rating, you see the blood splatter, but it's off camera it's the silhouette of him rather than actually seeing the kill um so that makes me kind of want to bump it down to be but i really just like the trickery of the leprechaun here uh you know we haven't we've seen him do his trickery and his you know force choke and controlling things but we haven't seen him like conjure up another human being yet and so i really like that and how he lured uh ian in with bridget's sexuality and you know tricked him and I, I even like the end after, you know, the kill's done, the leprechaun kind of jumps out and is like, was it good for you? And, and Bridget's voice, and I just, I really like that. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Ha! You shouldn't fool with me, lass! <laughs> you know, the more I'm talking, the more I'm convincing myself that it goes in A tier. This is a standout for the franchise, along with the pogo on your lung from the first movie. When I think a leprechaun kills, this is one that comes to mind. For that reason, I'm putting it in franchise standout. Man, it's borderline. It is right on the fringe here, but the Leprechaun being so good and Warwick Davis being so good, it's just, it's gotta be A for me. After Ian's death, Cody comes over to bring Bridget flowers and tries to make up with her. As they're hugging, the Leprechaun sneaks in the house and eventually makes Bridget sneeze three times, claiming her as his bride. The Leprechaun uses his magical tricks to choke Cody with a phone wire and then drops some pots and pans on him. He chases Bridget around the house until she eventually finds Ian's body hanging from the front door. Leprechaun then puts his golden collar around her neck to control her, and as he's pulling her in, she knocks over his gold, causing one of the gold coins to roll into Cody's finger. Bridget and Cody try to run off and escape, but as they're doing so, Leprechaun hits Cody in the foot with a mallet, takes Bridget, and teleports them back to his home. 
back at the tree, the leprechaun informs Bridget that she is going to be the mother of his creepy little leprechaun seeds, and when he pours the gold out on top of her, realizes the coin that's missing, which Cody has. It's missing. A gold shilling. It's not here. As the leprechaun goes in search for Cody and his coin, he lets Bridget go so she can get ready for the wedding, knowing very well she won't be able to escape. As she tries to escape, she finds her way back into her home, and as she leaves the front door of her home, she's teleported right back to the tree, so she starts collecting rocks as little markers to use. We then check on Cody, who is running back to Morty's place where the cops are surrounded and questioning him about Cody, as he is the suspect in Ian's murder. Cody tries to explain to Morty about the leprechaun and tries to give him proof with the gold coin, but obviously Morty doesn't believe him. As Morty states that leprechauns don't exist, that is when Lep drops in and hits him. What's that you say? Leprechauns don't exist? <laughs> I want me go! He demands the coin from Cody and says that he will trade Bridget for the coin. As he goes to do so, Morty pushes down the bookshelf and tells him that he can never trust a leprechaun. They escape through the fire exit to avoid the police, and as Leprechaun follows them, he is unable to get through because of the iron bars. Morty and Cody head to a bar so they can be in public, but it is surrounded with cops, so they head into the bathroom. Morty, of course, being at the bar, has to go get a drink himself, leaving Cody in the bathroom by himself. Cody hears someone coming into the bathroom, believing it is the Leprechaun coming to kill him, and in fact it's just Tony Cox, dressed up as a Leprechaun, offering him some chocolate. Real milk chocolate. As Cody leaves the bathroom to go meet with Morty, Morty is just fixated on someone at the bar. Turns out it's actually the leprechaun and he teleports right next to them. This is where Morty actually becomes kind of useful. Being familiar with the tale of the leprechaun and knowing their love for drinking, he gets the attention of the entire bar and gives a toast to the leprechaun and then challenges his ability to handle his alcohol. Leprechaun eventually gets support from the other quote-unquote leprechauns that are chilling at the bar and eventually downs an entire bottle by himself. Pour all you want. Pour all you can. You won't beat me, because I'm a leprechaun. Come on. <laughs> he gets way too drunk, allowing Morty to grab him, presumably catching the leprechaun. He tries to use his powers to levitate what I believe was an ashtray and attack Morty with it, but he's just too drunk and his powers don't quite work. However, he does muster up enough magic ability to turn the jukebox on enough to distract Morty for a split second so he can smash a bottle over his head and split. Which means that Morty was useful for about 30 seconds or so. We then cut back to the tree where Bridget is still gathering her stones and she starts leaving a trail behind, but they disappear on her immediately. She stumbles upon a container that contains the leprechaun's buried belongings and she takes a sharp pick with her so she can attack him later. We then cut right back to the leprechaun where he is trying to sober up at a espresso bar and this is where our third kill comes into play. The waiter keeps telling the leprechaun that he needs to hurry up, pay, and get out of here that proceeds to make fun of his size. One of Santa's elves or one of the seven dwarfs? <laughs> I prefer cash, but maybe you're a little short. <laughs> Boom, gotcha. <laughs> this obviously makes the leprechaun very upset, and the waiter continues to poke fun and laugh at him, saying, Ha ha, you kill me. And, well, that gives the leprechaun an idea. The leprechaun heads over to where he is standing, stabs both of his hands, pinning him down to the table, and then turns on the espresso machine where he burns his face pretty badly with the steam. So, this kill is actually going to go... It's... You know what? It's gonna go right there with the first kill, or the second kill that we had for this movie, and I don't know whether to put it above or below... Uh, I'll make that decision by the end of this. Uh, so the reason it's going in A tier is this is like the first Leprechaun kill in this franchise. It is actually gory. If you go back to the first video and then you watch this one, we haven't had any real gore yet. Uh, and the special effects are actually, or the practical effects are actually pretty well done. It's not like Tom Savini or anything like that. But, you know, considering what we're working with on this franchise, it's actually really good. 
Plus, I was actually pulling for the leprechaun in this situation. The waiter was a genuine jackass, constantly making fun of the leprechaun for his height. And he might have honestly gotten away without being murdered if he just gave the leprechaun his coffee, let him sober up, and let him leave. But he had to be mean, and he got killed for it. So <laughs> this is the one time I was actually pulling for the leprechaun. And, you know, the reason this definitely nudges uh, up to A tier and not B, you know, the reasons I gave you between the gore, between the fact that leprechaun's kind of likable in this situation and the line where he says you kill me and that little grin that like aha moment the leprechaun gets whenever he realizes that yeah he's gonna kill him i just love that so i'm actually gonna go ahead and put this above the fan kill for one reason and that's the the blood the gore you know it, it gore and blood isn't everything with horror movies and kills but you need, you need some of it every now and then. And this franchise, so far especially, has lacked it. So it gets the nudge, oh, the nudge, the nudge over the fan kill. And the blades were off screen. You didn't actually see it happen. You see this happen, you know, in full force. So it gets over the double, uh, double propellers. After that, we see Cody and his uncle Morty who are at the go-kart track where they're trying to get the iron safe so they can trap the leprechaun in it. When Morty goes outside to get a ramp from his car, he gets arrested by security because they tripped a silent alarm. The security guard heads inside to find anyone else, but can't find Cody because he's hidden inside the ceiling. As the officer leaves to go back outside, we see the leprechaun who is also chilling in the ceiling with Cody, causing him to get scared and fall through. Thankfully, Cody manages to get away. When the security guard heads back outside to uncuff Morty, Morty ends up knocking the officer out, only for the leprechaun to appear and hit Morty. As he's going to attack and presumably kill Morty, Cody flashes his golden coin from the inside of the door, causing leprechaun to go in after him through the donkey door, but Cody has smartly set up the safe inside, so now the leprechaun is trapped. And this brings us right into our fourth kill. Morty tells Cody to go in the closet so they can find wood and make a ramp to transport the leprechaun, but as he does so, Morty locks him inside. He does this because now that they successfully captured the leprechaun, Morty wants his three wishes that they're technically owed. His first wish is for all of the leprechaun's gold. However, this backfires and the gold starts appearing inside of Morty's stomach, stretching it to a crazy amount. He begs the leprechaun to get it out of him, however, the leprechaun informs him that if he wants to, he's gonna have to use his second wish to wish him free. Morty does so, but then the leprechaun doesn't come out and he informs him that he's gonna have to go open the safe himself since it is iron. Once the leprechaun is successfully free, Morty keeps begging for him to get the gold out of him and the leprechaun says that if he wants that, he's gonna have to use his third and final wish. I wish you to get it out of me! Very well. Morty then wishes for the leprechaun to get his gold out of him, and leprechaun obliges by just cutting him wide open. Morty keeps begging for the leprechaun to save him, but he tells him that he's used all three of his wishes and he can't do so. Tough to, friend, but you're all out of wishes. <laughs> A part of me thinks this was some grand master plan by the Leprechaun, since technically Morty didn't have to use his second wish to wish him out, since he had to go open the safe anyway, meaning that Morty would have still had one more wish left. Now, this kill is actually going to be pretty tricky for me to rank, because I could put this, like, anywhere. I could see this... Honestly, if we're going by the title, this is kind of poorly executed, because you can tell that that's not his stomach. It's clearly like silicone prosthetic. There's no blood. There's no... It's very fake. Uh, so it's poorly executed, but with the creativity of the kill, with him, you know, having the gold appear in his chest and stuff, I can't put it at D. It's just too creative and cool to do that. So that means it's got to go bump up to at least average. But I really, really, really like how creative this kill is. Like, and how... You can almost see Morty's demise coming with how greedy he is from the, the beginning with his, you know, his whole tour ride being a scam, basically. You know, he'll do anything for money. He Even just a couple minutes ago, he tried to steal the money from the safe. You could just see him coming with his greed that was going to take over, and that's exactly what it did. So I like that element of it, like a character flaw, the creativity. I'm going to put it in B. Um, when I think of Leprechaun Kills, I generally think of this one too, so... You know, that makes me want to put it here, but it's just not executed well enough to do so. So I'm just going to kind of even all of that out and put it in B. This is a weird kill. I just, 
it can go anywhere from D to A, <laughs> just because there's so many things that are really good about it, with so many things that aren't quite good about it. Uh, a very different one. I'm curious to see what other people think of this kill, because I just don't know where to rate it. But yeah, Morty being an idiot and so greedy, you kind of saw it coming. Um, and I just like that, but yeah, the, the look of the kill itself isn't the best. <laughs> Now, immediately after our fourth kill, we're headed on to our fifth kill. Cody manages to escape the closet and head outside, however, the cop tries to take Cody in because he's the clear suspect in Ian's murder. However, the leprechaun uses his little girl voice that we saw in the first film to trick the officer into thinking that he's another one of Cody's victims. Hurt me. We're coming, ma'am. <laughs> We then see the leprechaun appear on his custom go-kart where he runs over the officer, instantly killing him. Oh boy, now where does this kill rank? It's going in one of two categories, it's D or F. Um, <clears throat> I just don't like this. We'll start with the small negative and the fact that we have seen the leprechaun drive how many small vehicles at this point? He had in the first movie his little tricycle, that was funny. And then he got pulled over on the car he found in the pot shop, pot shop, pawn shop, that was funny. Then he built this custom car to flip the truck, that was a little weird, but okay, it's cool. That's three times, I think, in the first movie, now we got another one in the second one. It's getting redundant, we get it, he's short, he's a leprechaun, it's funny seeing him in small vehicles. Although, I guess you could put up the argument that this is just like an average go-kart and not technically a small car for him, but... Uh, oh, okay, that's not even the biggest problem, because that's just a small gripe. If the kill was cool, that'd be fine, but this kill sucks. Like, he just flips over. He does nothing, and there's no blood and gore, which isn't always, like, the biggest detriment, as you could tell from the propeller. You don't really see any blood or gore, it's a silhouette, but... It's, how could you think of anything stupider than just running someone over with a go-kart and then having him flip and land on the grass? Now, I do think the leprechaun goes back and runs over him a second time, but that's... You, it's like a split second, you don't even see that happening. You just kind of see the leprechaun rev up his engine and then he goes over him, I think. So, this is very poorly executed. I, I don't really want to put it in F because you can make the argument that for the plot, he needed to die because they tripped the silent alarm. So that makes me want to just put it in poorly executed. But then at the same time, I don't really think there's any need for the security guard. He didn't need that silent alarm. I feel like they put the silent alarm in there just so they can make this kill. They, If you would have just had the leprechaun find a way to sneak in there by himself, and, and then they can do the little trap where they put him in... Ah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about this at all. I don't think it was necessary. I'm going to cut it from the movie. I'm going to give this series my first F and cut this from the movie because there's just... There's no need for it, in my opinion, and it was that stupid. After he kills the officer, the leprechaun then tries to run over and kill Cody. However, he ends up going straight through him. This is when Cody realizes that as long as he has the leprechaun's coin, he won't be able to kill him. Leprechaun revs up the engine and charges at Cody again, but disappears right before he gets hit. Cody grabs an iron bar and heads out to find Bridget. Now, if you remember from the police station, Cody overheard the homeless man saying where the leprechaun's home is, so he knows exactly where to look. Back at the tree, Bridget is waiting for the leprechaun in her dress, and she tries to seduce him, but ends up stabbing him with the pick, but it does absolutely nothing. Leprechaun hears Cody arrive at the tree, and then ties Bridget down to the bed, and searches off for him. He manages to find Bridget, however, is confronted by the leprechaun. While all of that was going on, Bridget picked up the broken pick she used on the leprechaun before and has now used it to free herself from his collar. She throws it at the leprechaun's head, knocking his hat off, giving her and Cody just enough time to try and escape, however, he then chases after them. And this actually brings us towards the end of the movie in our sixth and final kill. As Bridget and Cody are trying to escape, they somehow keep ending up right back where they started. They try one more time to a different entrance, this time they somehow get separated. Once he eventually finds Bridget, she tells Cody to leave the coin behind because that's all the leprechaun is really after. Cody seems a little confused and hesitant at first, but after a kiss from Bridget, he is convinced and hands the coin on over. Unfortunately for Cody though, this was just another one of the leprechaun's tricks and he has disguised himself as Bridget. Cody goes to attack and try and kill the Leprechaun with the Iron Rod, but the Leprechaun uses his magic to send it right back at Cody and kill him. Actually, no, because as it turns out, the gold coin he gave him was one of the chocolate coins that Tony Cox gave him at the bar earlier. 
And since Cody still has the last gold coin in his possession, the leprechaun can't kill him, meaning Cody was faking it. He then takes the rod, throws it at the leprechaun, impaling him and causing him to blow up. Now, this last kill is also tricky for me to rank. It's not bottom two for sure, but it is also not top two, which means it is one of the middle two. I just don't know if it's average or good. Um, the reason I want to put it in good is I like how it was set up. Um, I like the fact that Cody, you know, remembered the gold chocolate coin that Tony Cox's character gave him, uh, you know, at the bar. In fact, even when he took the chocolate, you could see the the cog spinning in uh, Cody's head. Like, he can use this gold and chocolate coin for something in the future. You just don't know how. Um, and then, you know, Cody remembering that he can't kill him as long as he's got that gold coin, tricking the leprechaun into thinking he didn't have it anymore. I like that. Outsmarting the smart little leprechaun. But the reason I don't want to put it there and want to put it in average is I don't really like the setup. Like, how and why did they get separated, Cody and Bridget. They were holding hands together and all of a sudden they're just not. That kind of makes me think that they just put it in there without any thought or care just so they could be separated to give you that final plot, which doesn't really sit right with me. However, I guess you could say that it's the leprechaun's tree. How in the world does anything happen? How did Bridget leave and then end up in her home and then leave the front door and end up back in the tree? So. I guess if you want to put in the mindset that this is a leprechaun's home, magic happens, anything can happen, okay, I can look past that. Um, I did really like the fact that the blowing up looked pretty cool. Uh, it looked realistic enough for being a mid-90s slasher in a leprechaun franchise. Uh, the iron rod, the effect of him glowing was kind of cheesy, but, you know, again, mid-90s slasher, that's part of the charm. Um, you know, for I'm going to bump it up to B tier. I'm not going to put it above Morty, uh, his little thing, because I just, I love the creativity in that. But I do enjoy Cody's setup, outsmarting the leprechaun with a gold chocolate coin. That I really, really like. So that is the main reason it's getting bumped up from average to good. And that is it. That is the kills here. We got two in A, two in B, one in C. Fairly good. And then that, that security guard, <laughs> just terrible uh other than that these kills are actually pretty enjoyable still nothing that stands out as an all-time great i'm not sure if any kill in the leprechaun franchise is going to do that because i mean it's the leprechaun franchise this isn't friday the 13th if you want some gory slashing kills you go watch that franchise so it is what it is but you know that is the final kill tier list guys now for the overall positives and negatives in my review of the film. We'll start with the positives first, because they're kind of split 50-50 for this film. First positive is Warwick Davis once more. I, I You're going to see that for pretty much every one of these Leprechaun movies. I love him as an actor. I love him as the Leprechaun. He's just so good. The voice, the monologue, the one-liners, the jokes. He is, he is this franchise. If it wasn't for Warwick Davis, you would not have seen eight, what, seven, eight sequels, it wouldn't have happened. Um, and the last two sequels didn't even have him in it, and they're not the best. The last one was pretty good. The one before that with Hornswoggle, ho, ho, we'll get to that one later. Um, but yeah, Warwick Davis kills it. Again, he has that perfect blend of creepy and funny, kind of like Robert Englund and Freddy Krueger, not quite to the level of him, but you can make the argument that that might have to do with the fact that Nightmare on Elm Street's Come on, I love the Leprechaun movies, but Nightmare on Elm Streets are better. Um, I am a big fan of this movie as well as the first one. These first two movies have a lot of nostalgia for me. Uh, I used to watch these all the time with my cousins as a kid, so I know I'm going to like these movies more than most people will, um, but that's why I want your opinions in the comments as well. I also, much like how I liked um, Mark Holton's character playing Ozzy in the first movie, I like Morty in this one, uh, uh, Sandy Barron. He, both of them are key plot points. Without Ozzy's stupidity, you kind of wouldn't have a lot of the first movie, and without Morty's greed, you wouldn't have a lot of the second movie, and Morty's greed is what gets him killed, so... He, his acting is just amazing. I, I must confess, this is the only thing I've ever seen him in. I don't know much about him at all, but while rewatching this movie makes me want to go look up some Sandy Barron because he's just, 
he just looks and plays the perfect creepy greedy uncle and he's so funny the way he bails cody out of the jail thank you officer like it just i don't know you guys got it when you watch the movie let me know what you think of morty because i love his character i also like how there's more kills in this one i think only one more but hey it is more and there's a little bit more gore you know we see um the espresso kill has some gore even though the propellers were off screen and a silhouette you did see some blood splatter and then the leprechaun blowing up was actually pretty cool not really any gore per se but you know a leprechaun blowing up to a bunch of pieces is pretty damn cool uh so that's definitely a plus um the plot wasn't as good as the first one i think i like the first plot because it was just so basic it was your standard tale of the leprechaun getting his gold stolen, except this time he's out to kill, because it's a horror movie. This one was pretty much the same thing, except with the element of the bride. I didn't dislike it, it was just kind of like, yeah, they threw it in there just so they could get an extra plot element. Not a positive, not a negative, really. The negatives, however, <sighs> we'll start with Bridget. Um... Not the best actress. <laughs> uh, I don't really see her in a lot of other stuff. I do not know Siobhan Durkin from anywhere. I just know her as Bridget in here. She's not terrible. I'm not saying she's bad. She She's what you would expect for a mid-90s horror comedy slasher. I guess because the first movie, you were I was impressed with the acting. I, it was more than I expected. This one was a little more of what you expected. Cody was pretty good. He wasn't awful. Morty amazing. Bridget kind of what you would expect it considering considering she's the girl that gets taken and yeah it, it is what it is um she also i don't know if they dubbed in her voice after like post-production or she's wearing some weird mic but the way she talks throughout the movie it seems like if either it's not her talking or it's like dubbed in it always every time i watch this movie it annoys me and it, i kind of feel bad for saying that because if that's just the way she sounds i don't know it's not that it sounds bad per se it just almost sounds dubbed in post-production while everyone else sounds like it's part of the movie i don't know if that's just me or or what but i always notice that every time i watch this movie however with that being said i will say on the couple examples we do get she can definitely scream <laughs> Uh, I also don't like some of the weird plot holes in this movie, which, if I were to dissect every bit frame by frame, I could probably find more, but, but the couple that come to mind is whenever Ian dies and Cody then, like, appears, uh, you know, presumably a couple minutes later, how did he not see Ian's body in the garage or all torn up and blood everywhere? I guess you could say the leprechaun closed the girl. No, he didn't, because after that kill happens, the leprechaun walks away singing, uh... She sneezes once, she sneezes twice, and leaves the garage door wide open. So how did Cody not see that? Um, also, uh, you know, being separated in the maze, they were holding on to each other, and then they, I feel like there's some elements here that got left out and, and weren't thought of <laughs> as much as they should be, but again, that's kind of what you expect with a movie like this. I could probably go more in-depth and, you know, like I said, frame by frame, dissecting more plot holes like that, but we'd probably be here for a while, so... Overall positives, Warwick Davis kills it once more, Morty plays fantastic greedy uncle, and then I like the kills a little bit more than the first one, I think. The negatives, the acting was a little more what you'd expect in a movie like this, um, and then the plot holes. It's definitely the plot holes, so those are the two biggest takeaways from this movie, or I guess the four biggest takeaways. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like and hit subscribe for more content like this. The next video that I will be doing will be Leprechaun 3. Obviously, I'm going to continue to go in order. If you haven't seen the first Leprechaun and want to, it'll be in this playlist. Um, so yeah, guys, let me know in the comments what you think about this movie, this franchise, and where you would rank these kills overall.